Hello. Yes. Here we are in the pill box. Yes. Um, this is either Hero 3 or 4 or 5. I can't remember which one it is. Um, anyway. Hi. Uh, zero carb versus Lyme disease. Um, a review, really, because basically. Um, this is good. this is too. I want to talk. To, I'm, I'm actually want to talk to people who who really do have Lyme disease today, because um, I'm not serious. I'm not. Um, I'm not pulling your chain. I'm not. You know. Thing. I just want to talk about something zero carb and Lyme disease um, because basically, um, after ten years of Lyme's taking lumps out of me and going through all sorts of different treatments and things like that, and nothing nothing really working at all in the long run. Um, this has given me the most hope that, you know, I could ever have, like, you know. And because, like, if, if you've got another disease or anything other than Lyme's disease, like, you've got um, a physician or um, doctors, you know, things like that, telling you what to expect, what's going on and what's not going on, and think, but with Lyme's disease, you are left completely and utterly alone, really. And you, the research you have to do is, is your own. So, I mean, I ended up with it. I th it might, in the long run, it might actually be a good thing. Um, I ended up um, on the zero carb diet, and basically, it's, it's actually worked better than anything else. It doesn't cure doesn't cure at all but it makes you be able to manage the disease or handle the di disease better than ever you, you thought possible for you know because I was losing complete enough to, I was losing um, hope really I was losing hope and um, being the person that I am is I like to I, I'm the sort of person that wants to stop and think well if this works why does this work you know so first of all I'm going to tell you um, what I'm what I'm eating, okay. I'm eating beef, pork, m m meat and fat, um, fish and eggs, and mushrooms. A couple of mushrooms. I, I did, that's it, really. And offal and liver. Um, the body functions really, really well on a day-to-day -day basis if you just eat meat and fat by the sounds of it or, you know, with the eggs and you know lots of protein and lots of fat the body seems to function incredibly well I'm not eating any greens any carbs or any, anything like that at all um, I'm just eating meat and fat just call it what it is meat and fat and there's, there is a break-in period. I've been doing it now for three and a half, coming up four months. And there's a break-in period, where you, but your body starts getting used to it and starts getting functioning on it. And to be quite honest, at the moment, I'm feeling I'm function, I'm starting to function at, you know, at, given the physical condition that I'm in, given everything that I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of functioning optimally um, with what I've got. You know, but the other thing is, it seems to be repairing itself. I, if you've watched any of my older videos, you would have realised that I've gone on about my bloody feet, and I thought it was um, permanent damage, and, and my feet were basically fucked, and I was going to have to live in. You know, walking was going to be a difficulty, and everything like that. But my feet, although not perfect, they are improving and I am beginning to be able to walk and that does make all the difference. That does make all the difference. Walk without being in absolute agony makes an awful lot of difference actually. Yeah. So how does it work against Lyme disease? I mean, it's a, it's a question. I don't know. But I, I mean, my theory, I've got a theory, okay? And uh, here it is. Bacteria, they run off, um, well, the Lyme bacteria runs off manganese and sugar. Uh, magnesium and sugar, I think it's manganese, Mag I'm thinking it work in there. Magnesium and sugar is what the fuel that the, the um, spirochetes run off. Um, I've removed all sugar from my diet, all. So I've created an environment inside of me that is not a great place for the spirochetes to live, okay? 
And there is not a sort of thing like they will just die and starve or anything like that. Because what the spirochoots do, because of very, very thin, they can go into what they call cis form. This is only what I've read. This is only what I think. And if I've got this wrong, shoot me down if you want. But I mean, this is what I, this is my understanding. Um, and they go into cis form and they can stay in cis form for months and months and months. And basically, um, when there's, comes in, the environment comes positive for them again that they can breed and they can get on and do what they want to do, function as they want to function. Um, when if sugar becomes available, magnesium becomes available, bang, they go whoop, in, and they come back out into their spirochete form and do their breeding and everything like that. But the thing about it is, is when they're in cis form, they don't breed. They just they just sort of like almost like in this state of this, sort of like a suspended animation. animation. And um, so I think basically what happens is a lot of the spirochetes or the, the bacteria that in, when you're on a zero carb, they just go into this cis form. So they don't act, they're, they're, they're sort of not attacking you. Doesn't mean they're not there. You, your, your bacterial load is really quite high still. Oh, it's very high. And one of the things I was thinking, there are things that you can take that um, can attack the cis forms. So I'm, I'm gonna go and look into sort of what advisory, I'm gonna go do it on a herbal sort of thing that's a, a, a known to attack the cis forms. And I'm gonna hit, start hitting the herbs that attack the cis forms, see if that helps. I did take some vitamin C the other day and it knocked me sideways because basically I think it created a, a herx by um, all this, <laughs> this going into, because there was vitamin C sort of flooding around my system and, and you know, and um, it's like a sugar and uh, that would have, they would have come out and fed on that and then there was nothing else left for them so they just died and uh, I had a, uh, a horrible herbs for one day. So no, no supplements on this, yeah. My body was really, really, as I said, 10 years of, um, 10 years of Lyme disease and, it, um, and I've realised how much it's taken out of my body, actually, you know, by the thing, and it, as it starts to repair itself. But the, I think the, the eating meat and fat, as the fat is very, very important, it puts you into optimum health given the given situation. So if you're going to be um, function, optimum function, it's not necessarily health, it's function capabilities. Give yourself the best thing possible. So if you have got limes and you are desperate and you are really desperate, and I know, I mean, you may be vegan, you may be vegetarian or anything like that, but if you want to get your life back, you could always try just eating meat and fat and see how you get on with that. Um, bowels, my bowels have never been healthier in my whole life. I'm sorry, the bowel, I, I, it, was, it did take a couple of months to settle down, but um, now it's just sort of like regular and little in little, there's very little. There's very little food waste with um, zero carb. There's very little washing up. There's very little food preparation time. It's very, very easy. What I intended to do is cook joints of meat and just use them as fast food with lots of fat in it. And I buy fatty joints. I want the fat because that gives you the energy. That gives you the vum, 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 vum. Okay, that's what you're burning. Anyway, peace and love. I hope this is um, helpful. And if anybody wants to ask any questions, put anything up below. Do subscribe because... Um, and if you want to think, press the alarm bell, as they say, like, you know, but um, God knows how long we're going to be up on thing. I don't know this is thing, but zero carb versus lime is a very good management system. Not a cure, but a management system. Peace. Bye.